Welcome back to Movie Explained in English. Today I'm going to explain a action drama movie released in the year 2022 titled Decibel, which was directed by Wong and Ho. Before we start, please subscribe the channel. Your one click means a lot for us. The movie starts in a football stadium, a match between two arch rivals. The spectators are enjoying every second of it and cheering for their respective teams. However, one particular man seems to be scared. He knows something that no one else does that the stadium will explode if the noise level exceeds 100 decibel. There is an indicator inside the stadium that displays the noise levels. As the scared looking man is on the phone talking about the possible explosion, a fan overhears him and inquires about the matter. With an anxious look, the man reveals everything about the possible explosion. He then asserts that if a goal is scored, the noise levels will obviously increase. Hearing this, the fan becomes worried, but he knows what he is supposed to do, he has to prevent any goals until the final whistle. Unfortunately, the home team gets a penalty. Chaos is about to unfold, but in the nick of time, the fan heroically runs to the pitch and kicks the ball. This delays the explosion for the time being, but can he delay it until the full-time whistle? Following this, the movie goes into a flashback. In the depths of the ocean, east of Hiroshima, a Korean submarine named Hala is passing through. Inside, there are several Navy officers trying to protect their country from attackers. The leader of the group ISW. He is the same scared man from the first scene. Unfortunately one day, they come under heavy fire, as an enemy submarine starts bombarding with missiles. Kong calms his crew down and tries his best to guide them toward safety, but is unsuccessful. At the end, Hala crashes at the bottom of the ocean. The scene then fast forwards by a year and Kong, who is still alive, has started living a normal life. He has retired from his duties and spends most of his time with his wife, Yu Jung and daughter, Seoul. One day, as he is heading to a press meet, suddenly, he receives a call from an unknown number. The person on the other end explains that explosives have been planted at an amusement park, and also at a major's house. He then asks Kong to select a location among the two, but as expected, the latter hangs up. Following this, Kong attends the press meet where he is asked about the submarine disaster that killed many crew members. One of the reporters even asks Kong if he did anything to help the situation at all. However, he does not answer any of them and remains silent. Next, the Major receives a parcel at his home and on opening, he finds a bomb inside. At the same time, another bomb is found at the amusement park as mentioned by the anonymous caller. Sadly, before the Major can react, the bomb explodes, leaving his whole family injured. In the next scene, Kang's wife, Yu Jung, receives a call, informing her to arrive at the amusement park as soon as possible. Right then, the bomber calls Kong and orders him to install an app on his phone. He explains that the app will block all other calls and messages apart from his. Kong obviously thinks the entire thing is BS, and refuses to comply, but when the caller threatens to detonate the next bomb, he hurriedly installs the app. And as soon as he does so, he receives the next location which is going to be bombed. To Kang's horror, it is the city's largest football stadium, Asiatic Main Arena. Before hanging up, the bomber warns Kong against informing the police and gives him 60 minutes to save the people in the stadium. Kong wastes no time and rushes to the Asiatic Main Arena where a club football match is being held. He goes inside the stadium and immediately starts panicking after noticing the sheer number of spectators there. Moreover, finding a tiny bomb inside the time frame is also virtually impossible. Just then, the bomber calls Kong and gives him some instructions. Firstly, the bomb works on sound. If the noise inside the stadium reaches 100 decibels, it will get activated. The bomber also reveals that the bomb is inside the VIP sitting area. In the meantime, a news reporter, Oh Day, hears Kong talking to the bomber. He recognizes him as the captain of the doomed Hala submarine and inquires if everything is fine. Kong simply mentions that a bomb is going to explode if they make too much noise, before walking away. Hearing this, Oh Day becomes terrified and he starts brainstorming ideas on how to control the crowd. When nothing comes up, he covers his mouth and rushes to the field in an attempt to distract everyone. The plan works for a while and the crowd becomes silent, but soon, he is taken away and the match resumes. 
Meanwhile, Kong is still on his way to the VIP sitting area, which is exactly on the opposite side of the stadium. Unfortunately, at the same time, the match goes to penalties and a player scores a goal. This prompts the crowd to go wild and the sound level easily crosses 100 decibels, hence activating the bomb. Soon after, an anxious Kong reaches the location and starts searching the room haphazardly. Luckily, he finds the bomb inside an aquarium and takes it out. He then asks everyone in the VIP area to evacuate. All the people comply, and they rush to safety. However, one kid is left behind with only 5 seconds on the bomb timer. Kong, who is already out, sees this and rushes to save the kid. He covers her body with his, and at the same time, the bomb explodes. Fortunately, both of them survive, and as Kong walks out of the room, holding the little kid, everyone claps for him with respect. Later, as Kong is leaving the stadium, he again receives a call from the bomber, who reveals his next target. It turns out to be a local swimming pool resort, which is always sprawling with people. The timer also starts, which is exactly 60 minutes. Since the resort is very far, Kong asks the reporter, O'Day, to lend his car for the day. The latter obliges, but only on the condition that he can join. Kong doesn't want to endanger anyone, but since he doesn't have much time, he agrees. On the other hand, as Sol is returning home alone, she gets kidnapped. Meanwhile, Kong showcases his impeccable driving skills and manages to reach the resort in a matter of minutes. But in the process, he breaks every traffic rule imaginable. Right then, Kong receives a call from the bomber, and this time, he also receives a picture. It is of his daughter, Sol, who has been tied and placed inside a black car. The picture devastates Kong, but he quickly regroups and focuses on the task in hand. He then proceeds to the swimming pool, but not before ordering O'Day to search for the black car. Shortly after, Kong starts looking for the bomb around the area. He suspects that it is inside the water like the last time, and surprisingly, he is correct. To get a closer look, Kong dives inside the pool and tries to disarm it. Elsewhere, at the amusement park, his wife, Yu Jung, has arrived at the scene, donning a bomb suit on. It turns out that she is one of the best bomb diffusers in the city, and that's why she has been called upon. Unfortunately, while she is trying to concentrate, a couple living in the nearby apartment makes a loud noise. This activates the bomb and the clock starts ticking. At this instance, we are shown the scenes of two places, the the swimming pool and the amusement park, where the husband and wife are trying to defuse the bombs. The situation is tense in both the places, and at the end, they decide to shield the bomb with their own bodies, hoping that it can save people. However, when the timer runs out, nothing happens. Officers at the amusement park assume that it is a prank but right then, Kong receives a call that is connected to the timer near his wife. Now, both of them can hear each other. Yu Jung can also see a picture of her kidnapped daughter inside the timer. Then, the bomber speaks up and reveals that a large explosive is set under the ground where Yu Jung is standing. She can run, but if she does so, little soul will be killed. Kong, who is hearing everything, begs his wife to run away, but she doesn't move an inch. A short while later, a large explosion occurs, which tosses her a few meters away. At the parking lot, O'Day discovers the black car he was looking for and somehow opens the door. But as soon as he does so, a small explosion occurs, causing him minor injuries. Kong also arrives at the scene but doesn't find any signs of his daughter inside the car. In the following scene, we are finally shown the mastermind behind all the terror attacks. He is Tae Seong, ex-Navy, who was a part of the Hala submarine when it came under attack. His brother was also in the submarine, but he passed away on that fateful day. Now, Tae Seong is doing all this to take revenge on the government and calm for their arbitrary decisions. Elsewhere, the city's section chief officer, Young Han, is informed about the explosion at the amusement park. He is also told that the bomb diffuser, Yu Jung is still alive, which makes her an obvious target for the bomber. Hence, Young Hang asks his driver to take him to the hospital immediately. But before they can reach, Tae Seong enters Jang Yu's medical room and kills her security guard. On the other hand, Kong and O'Day go to meet an ex-Navy officer, and inquire about Tae Sung's whereabouts. The latter gives them an address and so the search begins. After a while, 
Kong enters the perpetrator's house, where he finds a lot of materials scattered around. These are the same materials that are used to make the bombs. Right then, Kong receives a call from Tae Seong who holds him responsible for the death of his other co-officers. Kong tries his best to justify himself but Tae Seong does not listen and suggests he meet him at the Mist Hotel. After this, disguising himself as a doctor, Tae Seong takes Yu Jung out of her room in a wheelchair to the hallway. In the meantime, Young Han also arrives there but fails to recognize the perpetrator. He instead goes straight to Yu Jung's room and finds her guard lying dead on the floor. Alarmed, he orders his driver to scan the whole area for Tae Seong. The latter does find him, and initiates a fight. But in the process, he gets killed, allowing Tae Seong to drive away with Zhang Yu. Meanwhile, a worried Kong calls Young Han and explains the entire situation to him. He also reveals about the bomb-related materials found at the perpetrator's house. Soon, Kong and Ode arrive at the Mist Hotel and begin searching for the bomber. But instead, they find little Sol sleeping on a couch wearing a jacket covered with explosives. Meanwhile, Young Han and his team inspect the perpetrator's house and deduce that the explosives are connected to different chips and it is difficult to defuse them. Elsewhere, Tae Seong enters the seminar hall of the Mist Hotel wearing another jacket full of explosives, and greets the crowd. Hearing his voice, Kong rushes to the hall and confronts him. He tries his best to calm the bomber down, but to no avail. Tae Seong keeps on accusing Kong for the death of his brother, Tae Ryong, and several other officers. He also belittles him for taking advantage of the situation for his own benefit. Following this, we are taken into a flashback. It has been 11 days since Hala has been stuck at the bottom of the ocean. Tae Ryong can be seen talking to his brother and mentioning that he has full faith in Captain Kong and his ability to save them. Right then, Kong receives a telegram message from the headquarters, stating that it will take around 15 days for help to arrive. With only 19% oxygen left in the submarine, the Navy officers start to panic. Hence, to control the situation and save as many officers as possible, Kong comes up with a plan. He cuts a string into different lengths and informs the officers that whoever gets the longer length of the string will survive and the others will have to sacrifice themselves. One by one, the officers start pulling the strings from Kang's hand and let fate decide their survival. Tae Seong gets a longer string while his brother, Tae Ryong pulls a shorter one. Devastated, Tae Seong tries to protest against the captain, but he is pushed away. Then, right before his eyes, Tae Ryong and the others who got shorter strings are forced to leave the place. Back to the present, Tae Seong tells Kong that his wife is trapped inside a car parked outside the hotel. Now, he only has three minutes to save both his daughter and wife. He also mentions that Kong needs to take the jacket he is wearing near both to disable the timers. With the clock ticking by, Tae Seong makes the situation even more difficult by attacking Kong. The two go back and forth for a while, but in the end, Young Han arrives and shoots Tae Seong dead. Following this, with only about 90 seconds left, Kong jumps from the top floor of the Mist Hotel and manages to reach his wife. He then defuses the bomb in the nick of time and saves her. But by this time, only 23 seconds are left on the timer. So, without caring about anything else, he drives the car inside the building and finally reaches his daughter. He then gets out of the car and defuses the bomb, right before it explodes. In the last scene, Kong accepts his mistake and takes responsibility for the dead officers in front of the media. He mentions that the incident happened because of his silly decisions and that he should have acted more wisely. The movie ends with Kong visiting the tombstones of the deceased soldiers and giving them his final tribute. That's my explanation for the movie, Decibel. So, what do you guys think about the movie, write in the comment. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.